Today we get to take some fresh cut pork belly, we're gonna cure it into bacon the traditional way, meaning no artificial or synthetic preservatives, just salt and some optional sugar. A few years ago I made a video on how to cure bacon the traditional way with just using salt. That's been a super popular video, but I've changed the way that I cure the bacon since then because the end product is generally just too salty for most people. That's the number one complaint I get from people who try that method. About a year after I made that video, I started curing it a little bit differently and I put some notes in the video description under that video with updates, but most people don't see that. So here we are making another video where I'm gonna show you the way I do it now, which gives you a much less salty product in the end, and we're also gonna smoke it this time. The things we need in order to make the bacon is of course, pork belly, you wanna source the best quality pork belly you can get. This is fresh cut pork belly from pigs I just harvested here on the grass-fed homestead. I butchered this myself. This is about as fresh as you can get organic pork belly. We also need to use salt. This right here is a coarse sea salt. You can see here that these are chunky grains of salt right here. The purpose of this salt in the curing process is to draw the moisture out of the meat. The moisture is what causes the meat to go bad. The salt causes the meat to go good. The more coarse the salt is, the less salt permeates into the meat and you get a less salty product. If you use a super fine salt, it'll work into the meat more, it'll be saltier. Sugar is optional. You can totally do this without any sugar at all. This right here is maple sugar. The sweetness of the sugar offsets some of the saltiness of the salt. It also has some natural preservative qualities. This, again, being a maple sugar, is gonna give it also a little bit of a mapley sort of flavor in the end, which is desirable. In most cases, our salt to sugar ratio is gonna be one to one. A cup of salt, a cup of sugar. However, this being maple sugar is way stronger than regular sugar. So you actually wanna use a quarter of what you'd normally use. So I got a quarter cup of maple and one cup of the salt. And lastly, we need a container in which to cure the bacon. I used to use these glass Pyrex dishes, which work pretty well, but there are some disadvantages to them. This is a little bit deeper, so we can get two slabs of pork belly in here. And with the Pyrex dish, all the moisture that's being drawn out of the bacon accumulates in the bottom of the dish, and basically it's marinating in this salty brine, which makes it saltier. We don't want it saltier. The workaround for that is a trick I learned from the meatsmith master himself, Brandon Sheard, a farmstead meatsmith. He recommended drilling holes into a plastic tub, putting the tub inside of another plastic tub, putting the bacon in here, and then all the juice that's gonna drain off the bacon is just gonna be caught into this lower tub. That way the bacon's not sitting in a brine and you don't have to be pouring the liquid off each day. Less salty this way and less work. All right, so here we go guys, we're gonna get curing. So here is my tub with the holes in it. You just see those little holes I drilled into there. And we're just gonna place this inside of a tub that does not have any holes in it. Now we're gonna take our salt Get a good coating of salt there on the bottom. If you're using sugar, now you, now's the time just to add a little bit of sugar down there as well. Now we're gonna take our pork belly slab, skin side down. Most of you guys are not gonna be able to source skin on pork belly. With the skin off, you should still see a lot of white on this side where all the fat is. So either the fat side down or the skin side down, meat side up. Now we're gonna add Another layer of salt on here. And our sugar. If you have more pork belly, which I do, you put the next layer right on top of it. So again, skin side down, right on top of that piece underneath it. Again, salt. And sugar. But the salt here is still gonna do its job. It's gonna draw the moisture out that's still in the meat and it's gonna go to the bottom of the bucket, drain out, and then after 10 days, it's gonna be ready for smoking. And now it's time to get this in the refrigerator so it can start curing. 
That'll sit in the refrigerator just like that for five days. After five days in the refrigerator, I took the bacon out and this is what we have in our lower tub here. That's all the juice that drained out from the bacon. So I clean up the trays and then we're gonna do the same thing that we did five days ago. We're gonna add the salt to the bottom of the tray, the sugar, and then the bacon back in. But if you're carrying two pork bellies at the same time, you just wanna flip the order in which they're in there. So the one that was on the bottom last time will now be the one on the top and vice versa. We have reached day 10, which is an exciting day because in theory, our bacon is done. You might be asking, what do you mean it's done? You haven't smoked it yet. Well, right now we have a cured pork belly. This stuff is ready to go. We are definitely gonna be smoking these bad boys to get a better end product, but if we didn't have access to a smoker, we could certainly call it good right here and enjoy some really good bacon. But if you can smoke the meat, you definitely should. The smoking process, of course, adds flavor to your meat, but also it aids in the preservation of the meat. The smoky patina that's left on the meat when we're done actually will drop the pH, so it makes it more acidic on the surface of the meat, making it an inhospitable environment for pathogens. Before we smoke the pork bellies though, we need to take them over to the sink, rinse them off, we need to get all the salt and the sugar off of the meat, and then we're gonna pat them dry with a towel. We definitely want them dry as they go into the smoker. With the bellies washed and dried, it's now time to hang them on our bacon hanger. This is what's gonna enable us to hang it in our smoker. This here is a simple smoker that I made. If you wanna see how I made it, Check out the pop-up bubble that's in your top right hand corner of your screen right now. There is a video that shows how I made this. If you don't have pop-ups enabled or if you're on a mobile device, check down in the video description. I'll have a link for it there too. Basically, it's just a wooden box made out of pine. I have a couple dowels through it, so I have something from which to hang the meat. And for the smoke, I'm using a smoke generator. It's called a Smoke Meister. It's made in the USA out of food grade stainless steel. It requires no electricity or fans, pumps, anything like that. So there you have it, the bacon is now smoking. There's enough wood chips in that hopper to last for about six hours. I'm gonna fill it a little bit more as we go, give it a few more hours. If you wanna smoke your product, you let it go 12 hours. You can even let it go overnight. It's perfectly fine, as long as the temperature isn't too low. You don't want the meat freezing. So I'm just gonna let it smoke for a while and I will check back later. Mmm, love the smell of hickory smoked anything. So here's my bacon after about eight hours of smoking. By all means, if you have the time and resources, take this longer, take this out to 12 hours or 24 hours, just keep smoking it. Other than the smell, how we know it's been smoked is there's a yellow tinge that starts forming on the fat of the meat. It gives it that nice patina. There's not a lot of it on the face of the bacon here. The fat is still pretty white there, but all along the outside, the fat has that yellow tint to it, which is what we're looking for. There are three more steps in the process of the bacon making. The next step is to cut it up, then we're gonna cook it, and then we're gonna eat it. Oh. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Bam, finished product. All right, little buddy, you ready for the taste test? Yes, I am. Okay, before you taste it, do you remember last time we made a video about bacon, what your taste test was, your results were? Um, I think it was double thumbs up. I was guaranteed. All right, little buddy, you ready for the taste test of our bacon? Yes. Okay. Mmm, salty. Salty? Yes. Is it good? Yes. 
It tasted like salt. All right, let's see how it came out this time. Might still be a little hot. Thumbs up! Woohoo! Yeah. And a thumb. All, All right. four thumbs. Alright. So is it too salty? Not too salty. I think it's just right. Alright. Well, it smells amazing. Alright. Here we go. Mmm, hot. Oh, wow. That. It's perfect. It is not too salty. Perfect. It's fantastic. Wow. I'm gonna go eat the rest of that bacon. It is fantastic. So I'm gonna wrap this up. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you've enjoyed the video, please click the subscribe button down below and be sure to pass this on to anyone else that you feel needs to learn how to make bacon. And press the like.